Well, you know, in medicine, doctors just aren't taught about the power that their force can have. So doctors graduate without this powerful tool in their medical toolbox. About 80% of what primary doctors see these days are these chronic lifestyle diseases. But instead of treating the underlying cause, right, they just medicate the symptoms and hope to slow down the rate at which their diabetics go blind and go on dialysis and lose their lower limbs, rather than treating the cause and reversing the disease in the first place. That's possible with plant-based nutrition, but doctors weren't taught about this. Uh, Dr. Dean Orange published the Lifestyle Heart Trial, proving July 21st, 1990, in the most prestigious medical journal in the world, that with a, a, a controlled, randomized trial, that heart disease could be reversed. Arteries open up without drugs, without surgery. So we effectively have had the cure to the number one killer uh, since 1990, yet to this day, hundreds of thousands of men and women continue to needlessly die from what we learned decades ago was a preventable, arrestable, reversible condition. If that's all a plant-based diet can do, reverse the number one killer of men and women, uh, shouldn't that be the default diet until proven otherwise? And the fact that can also be so effective in preventing, arresting, reversing other leading killers like type 2 diabetes and high blood pressure would seem to make the case for plant-based eating simply overwhelming. I think there's this concept that, you know, food is just fuel, and f uh, calories a calorie. So 100 calories of carrots is the same as 100 calories of Coca-Cola, which is the same, right? It's just fuel, right? Nothing beyond that, um, and whereas it's the opposite. It is the greatest um, exposure of our bodies to the external environment. When we have a, you know, a few square feet of skin exposed to the environment, our lungs actually uh, stretched out. Actually, we get quite almost a tennis court with all little folds, but our gut is even more with all little tiny folds. It's our greatest exposure, not just day after day, three times a day to our external environment. So all the toxins um, that we're exposed to, um, uh, it's really what we eat that's more important than what we're breathing or um, what we're physically touching. Um, and so that's why it's critically important to do clean diet, low in pollutants, which uh, are particularly um, polluting the aquatic food chain. So the highest levels of dioxins and PCBs and uh, toxic heavy metals like mercury are actually in the fish and seafood. You know, all the mercury from all the coal plants in China eventually settles down to the sea. I mean, everything eventually flows down to the sea. Uh, basically, you know, our oceans are humanity sewers at this point. According to the Global Burden of Disease Study, the largest study of human risk factors for disease in history, funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the number one cause of death in these United States is the American diet. Bumping smoking uh, to number two. Now cigarettes only kill about a half a million Americans every year, whereas our diet kills many, many more. So if most deaths are preventable and related to nutrition, then obviously uh, nutrition is the number one thing taught in medical school, right? I mean, it's obviously the number one thing our doctor talks to you about at every single visit, right? How could there be this disconnect between the science and the practice of medicine, right? Well, all one has to do is a little thought experiment. Go back um, to the you know, 1950s, right? Imagine yourself a smoker in the 50s. The average per capita cigarette consumption, 4,000 cigarettes a year. The average person walking around smoked half pack a day, right? The government was telling people to smoke. The medical profession itself said smoking on balance is good for you, right? So uh, smoking was normal. Most physicians smoke cigarettes. Uh, the AMA came out encouraging people, you know, saying, you know, smoking in moderation, oh, that's fine, right? Sound familiar, right? And so on one hand, you all have society, the government, the medical profession itself telling you to smoke. And on the other hand, all you had was the science. We had studies going back to the 1930s linking lung cancer to smoking, yes, yet effectively ignored off the face of the earth until 1964, the peak of smoking in the United States, and then every year basically it dropped ever since. One of the greatest public health victories of all time. What happened in 1964? The Surgeon General's report against smoking came out. Just this public acknowledgement by the powers that be that smoking is linked to lung cancer. It took more than 7,000 studies before the first Surgeon General's report against smoking came out. You think maybe after, maybe after the first 6,000, so could have given people a little heads up or something? Powerful industry, right? And so that's where we are today, right? Most doctors 
are continuing to eat foods that are contributing to our epidemics of dietary disease. No wonder they're not telling their patients, just like they weren't telling their patients between puffs to stop smoking cigarettes. Right? The system is just set up to reward unhealthy behavior. Right? Think about the foods that are being sold. Fruits and vegetables are perishable. Right? They're not branded. There's no markup. I mean, what you want is something that sits on the shelf for a couple of weeks, right? They're great for shelf life, not good for human life. Until the system changes, until society catches up to the science, we have to take personal responsibility for our own health, for our family's health. We can't wait because it's a matter 